What's up, everyone? Dave here, aka Scribe D. And the song that you just heard in the intro video is called Let's Dance Boys, and it is from the soundtrack of the game that we're going to be playing today. And that game is Bayonetta. I know I've been saying uh, the next two LPs I'm doing are probably going to be uh, Crisis with Mike and a solo Let's Play of Mega Man X, and both of those are still coming soonish. I'm putting uh, Mega Man X on, on hold for a little while because I have some really specific plans for that. And Mike and I are waiting to do Crisis until my new mixer comes, so probably a week, week and a half until that starts. So this is actually kind of a last minute thing that I picked uh, in the meantime. But that's okay because I love the shit out of this game. It is wild and frantic and crazy, and it's also a game that I'm pretty familiar with. So this is a game made by Platinum, who was co-founded by Shinji Mikami, who collaborated on the last game aside from the Scourge Project, because we don't mention that anymore, that me and Mike uh, played, Shadows of the Damned, and he also created the Resident Evil and Dino Crisis series, among others. And another co-founder of Platinum is Hideki Kamiya, who has an equally prolific track record. Uh, he worked on the original Resident Evil, directed Devil May Cry, Beautiful Joe, Okami, and RE2, and obviously this game. And you notice right away, you and this character who will get a proper introduction later are just plummeting from this enormous chunk of clock tower. And there's no tutorial just yet, it's just action and crazy nonsense from the word go. Long since erased from the records of time. There once existed two European clans who served as overseers of history for the powers that be. The Umbra Witches, dwellers of the darkness, and the Lumen Sages, controllers of the light. The clans paid each other great respect, and their efforts to maintain the balance between them defended the just passage of time. Yet one day, that balance was toppled. An interesting thing to note here about uh, this narration if, uh, that you're hearing, and I'm doing my best to speak in bursts when it's not coming up, uh, it was originally done, there were originally alternate versions done by two characters we're going to be meeting soon, but they eventually dropped that in favor of the ones you hear now. Harmonious clans fell into disagreement and stoked the flames of hatred against each other, resulting in an era of strife. The conflict between the Umbra and the Lumen threw all of Europe into a chaotic loop of battle, ambush, assassination, and casualty. It was truly a gruesome war. Despite the tremendous radiance of God shining upon them, the Lumen sages were gradually weakened by the assault of the secretive Dark Witches. Years after the balance was lost, the war had ended in the Umbra Witch's favor. So basically, the European magical witch version of the Hatfields and the McCoys told from a Japanese perspective. Totally, totally standard. So as you can see, out of all the games I listed earlier that Hideki Kamiya has directed, uh, the closest comparison to his prior work is probably uh, Devil May Cry with a little bit of beautiful Joe thrown in. You know, super complicated combos, Great at performances for fights, tons of cutscenes with really flashy, like, gaudy, choreographed uh, sequences, really convoluted plot. Their victory was short-lived. Fearing the witch's dark abilities, humans began to condemn the remaining Umbra. They launched the witch hunts, rounding up the battle-weary witches with little resistance and subjugating those who wished to continue the struggle. Human faith in the miracles of their god pushed the witch hunts further, and soon the Umbra witches, keepers of the darkness, were extinguished from the earth. All but one. Oh man, I'm really doing terrible here. Anyway, what these opening scenes are establishing is that, uh, well, it's establishing the Umbra witches and the Lumen Sages and the balance and light and dark and all that stuff. You know, we have Black Plaid, Bayonetta and the very uh, crimson outfit of Jean. Uh, there's already a lot of talk about establishing duality, and we'll talk about that more very shortly. And forgive me if I uh, slip up a little bit and call that character Jean or Jean or something. 
Because Jean is the correct pronunciation with like a soft J, like the J in beige. But it, that doesn't always compute for me just because I'm so not used to seeing that name. So uh, these storyboard cutscenes are actually pretty interesting. Not this one necessarily for uh, its actual content, but just because of why they're here. Uh, the reason we have these kind of slideshow cutscenes is because uh, the developers essentially hit a time limit where they couldn't hit their release window, which if I'm remembering correctly, this game came out in January 2010. It might have been uh, much earlier in Japan, but I'm not sure. Anyway, they couldn't hit their release window if they were to fully animate every cutscene since there were already 90 minutes or so of fully animated cutscenes of the game. And so, this is why these cutscenes ex exist. I just love that imagery, like the ha the the robed men and the howling angel and that almost like coffee stain colored tint to everything. It gives a very silent hillish vibe. And so now we're going to be starting the prologue where we're going to meet uh, Enzo, who is one of my favorite characters in the whole game. And really, the game gives rise to a number of really awesome characters. Banetta herself is actually kind of interesting. Um... Because, yeah, she is that kind of tits and ass fan service kind of character. I mean, there are parts of the game that are essentially dad ass the game. But she is also um, one of the few kind of fan servicey type female characters in games who is both hyper sexualized and hyper objectified, if we're being honest, who is also empowered she is the star of the show she is very very flashy and incredibly powerful also if you guys see a beetle in here uh let me know because i know there's one here from listening to hideki kamiya's commentary and the cutscene this is apparently because the uh the cutscene director uh aijiro nishimura not sure i'm pronouncing his first name correctly is apparently a big fan of Beatles, and he hid them all all through uh, Resident Evil 4. And I know for a fact that there is one here in the graveyard, but I've never been able to spot him. Even Oleg Man the Destroyer gets scrambled in the end, right? You know, I still don't get why the hell you drag me out here for these things. I just drop off the merchandise. Hey. Bet you can't guess what today is. Reading the good Lord's book ain't gonna do much. People been waiting for this asshole to get whacked for ages. Please. Hell, look around. There's no love lost for old Humpty Dumpty. But you gotta keep the outfit happy. We don't take care of him, they take care of us. And I prefer my shoes made out of rubber not concrete. But hey, it's that kind of town. Without good-hearted souls like us to put these bastards six feet under, where'd society be? Of course, the pay's not bad either. <laughs> so yeah, Enzo is kind of uh, Jesus, like a little really ratty character. He reminds me a lot of Danny DeVito. If it were me, I'd be praying he ends up barbecue. Or at least sunny side up. <laughs> You can keep praying, but the only way this guy's meeting the Lord is if God's hungry for breakfast. <laughs> oh, and I'm going to talk over him real quick for a second. Speaking you did hear that right earlier. Here, the game uh, is published by Sega, so among many other game and movie references you hear, you're going to hear a lot of references to Sega titles. Well, then, and he did reference uh, Eggman adios. from Sonic. I see them. They are instruments of God, descending upon his heavenly rays to earth. 
Oh, my God! Dear Lord, grant us guidance and keep safe the souls of our loved ones for all eternity. So what we have here is the game trying to establish the fact that Bayonetta kind of exists between dimensions. All of this uh, that is going on, and we're going to learn the names of those dimensions soon. Uh, it's essentially uh, 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 Paradise, Inferno, and I can't remember if uh, what they call Earth. I can't remember if they uh, call it uh, Purgatory or not, or Purgatorio. But yeah, that's the whole idea behind this part right here. Uh, she influences the human realm, I guess? Earth, essentially. Like a poltergeist, but she exists kind of in this in-between space. You look tired. Let me tuck you in. Oh, as to uh, who this Humpty Dumpty guy that uh, Enzo was talking about... I'll give you a hint. It's not uh, the character you're about to see come up here. And it's not Humpty Dumpty from Batman. And if you aren't following the reference, if you aren't following the reference, go out and buy Arkham Asylum Living Hell. And enjoy the saddest Batman villain backstory ever. Actually, don't enjoy it. Feel bad for Humpty Dumpty. Read it and feel bad. Uh, I'll save you the confusion and headache. They aren't talking about anyone that will ever get brought up again. Uh, Humpty Dumpty is pretty much a non sequitur. Next time you want your hands on me, you better make sure I'm dead. And now we have Rodan, who is the big, tough, stoic, cool guy. And I'm not just making fun of that arch uh, that archetype. He is pretty fucking cool. It's like Vin Diesel crossed with Morpheus. If it ain't my good buddy Enzo. How about you get out of here? But every time I see him light his cigar like this, it's so cool, but I think of Hades from Disney's Hercules, and I'm not sure if that makes him more or less cool. Would have been amazing if they had James Woods voice him, though. And then there's this. This weird, like... Pelvic thrusting suplex of a tower of angels. That's like right up there with uh, Kratos' amazing headbutt. I guess it was either Helios or Poseidon for the best single hits in 2010. It's just fantastic. Now the absolutely gratuitous, like, Japanese magical girl style henshin transformation with her. Bayonetta. <laughs> And we see a ridiculous skin-tight leather hair outfit, like some kind of dominatrix Rapunzel. Of course, the, ridic uh, the ridiculous choreography is just laid out all over this. And as much as it's gratuitous, it... I don't know, the game doesn't take itself so seriously that it can't just be stupid and silly and fun. And that's what I love the most about it. Don't worry about quality. I've got quantity. Getting back to her crazy ass hair outfit though, I can't tell if her hairstylist is one of the most happy people in the history of humankind or the most unhappy people. Because how, honestly, how the fuck do you do anything with hair that takes on that texture? On the other hand, she is the only person who can rival Peter Parker for the title of most amazing tailor in the history of fictional characters. Like seriously, consider every time Peter Parker has appeared in a comic, a cartoon, or a movie. Like, have you seen his costume in his costumes in the last two movies? He made that shit himself in his spare time, like it was nothing probably shat the silk out himself and dyed it too. If you're just gonna watch, I'm gonna oh man, this storm out here is getting bad. <laughs> I have a thunderstorm going on in the background. 
And that uh, right there, from what I've heard uh, through developer commentary and interviews and shit, was a uh, tribute to a baseball player named Sadaharu Oh. And again, don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, so I apologize if I'm not. And that is literally the only fun fact I will ever give you about baseball, because that sport is garbage. And now, finally, 15 minutes in, we are getting our tutorial. And we're just getting our basic buttons here. We have the triangle and the circle, instead of like the typical square and triangle, which is not really a big deal. Oh, I think I complained about that recently on something, I can't remember when. So, yeah. Uh, which time is essentially Bayonetta's version of the dodge counter, except in most games when you dodge or block at the last possible second, you, you get a, a free auto attack or something, or maybe like an AoE attack. Uh, this one turns everything into slow motion, which is really, really handy. And of course, everything is just very, very fast and loose and, and very uh, based on complex combos. And you can see up here in the top right, we're finally seeing our, our uh, essentially our scoring system. Of course, these are the halos that we will be collecting. We're going to be using them to buy shit later on. And we get them through doing increasingly fancy combos, because of course, and we also get graded at the end of each fight based on things like how much damage we took. I think uh, if you use items like uh, health lollipops, you get points subtracted from your score. And of course, how varied and fancy your combos are and how uh, how long they are affects your total score. I think most of all, and I think the highest rating you can get is a platinum medal. And I don't really expect to be getting too many of those on this playthrough just because it's really, really difficult to uh, to talk and give insight and jokes and humor and all that good shit while also playing this pretty loose and fast game. So, I'll settle for just not constantly fucking fights up. That's fine. Game is already sending us a message. Just settle for okay and fight. You know, I've read that Bayonetta is modeled after uh, a Japanese pop singer named Angela Aki, or Aki. And I've also read that people think that she's modeled after Sarah Palin, and I guess I can see the, resemb the resemblance, but that feels more like pareidolia than anything. Kind of like how uh, when someone says they saw the face of Christ on a burnt piece of toast, and you go, uh, yeah, I guess I can kind of see that. It's not, like, a real clear resemblance, like, yeah, clearly that's Sarah Palin. But the thing is, I know that I've read that people think that, but I haven't ever actually read anybody saying that they think that. So I don't know if it's just one person who thought that, and then people associated, uh, or people extrapolated from that, that there must clearly be a lot of people who think that way. So yeah, we have this short little tutorial section. We're gonna gather up our initial halos and meet some of the early game enemies. And of course, the reason that you start off with these crappy guns is because the developers want to make you feel empowered later on when you get your good guns. So they start you off with the weak ones first, so you see the difference. And that's pretty fundamental for almost any kind of power fantasy type action game. But it's a cool thing to wor uh, worth pointing out that. Uh, you'll probably start note if you haven't already noticed it in your games. You'll probably start noticing it now. Yeah. 
damn thing. Haven't you figured it out yet? There's no quarter for you in this world. Oh, fuck. I really didn't even have an excuse there. I wasn't even in the middle of commentary when I didn't dodge that. Oh, but I got that one. Very good. Here you can see which time fully in action. Yep, like I said, pretty handy. Because not only does it... The nice thing about it is it puts everything into slow motion. And, uh, shit, I'm getting hit and dropping my combos. Uh, it's not good. But, awesome. Which time again? So, these guys aren't much different from the standard enemies. They just have a little bit more health. I don't know that they do anything especially different from your, the standard angels. You see they have the health bar there, so you can go ahead and punish them. Get that nice flashy finish. Ah, silver medal. Silver medal. Oh, yeah, that's right. The other thing that counts towards the ranking is the time you take to complete the fight. You have any idea how much this is going to cost to fix? How the fuck do I always get wrapped up in this shit? Engine still purrs nicely. Now... About this little thing you've been looking into for me, Enzo. Let's have a quick chat. See? This is why I told you I was going home. I just got held up in the air by some invisible things, and you want an intelligence briefing? It never stops with you! You keep belly aching like that, and you're liable to wake Eggman from the dead. And I don't think either of you would like that. Ah! Catch you later, Bayonetta. Something tells me you're gonna need a rush on our special project before this shit hits the fan. Wait, Rodan. What about Eggman? Such a popular chap. I bet they hate him down there as much as you did when he was up here. We just need to make sure he won't come crawling back when they kick him out. Nothing a flower bed can't fix. Fill her up. You heard the man. Finish up in five minutes, or you're walking home to your cake and candles. What? Don't you leave me here! All right, since we're low on time, actually, since we've gone over a little bit from what I intended this episode to be, I'm going to cut the episode here. So, thanks for watching, folks. Hope to see you in the next episode. Till then, though, take it easy. Have a good one.